We are following arguments in two cases over Texas's restrictive abortion law at the Supreme Court. Uh, NBC's Ken Delanian is outside the court. Want to bring in also Joyce Vance, a former U.S. attorney and an MSNBC legal analyst. And Kim Whaley, a former assistant U.S. attorney and author of How to Read the Constitution and Why. Boy, do we need a book like that, that's for sure, especially after listening to the last hour or so. <laughs> Ken, let's talk through what we heard um, in the courts earlier today. Walk me through the arguments, the top lines here. So, Yasmin, there were a lot of tense and technical legal arguments that we just heard in the last hour. But the bottom line here is that Texas has an, a law that essentially bans abortions after the sixth week of pregnancy. But it doesn't empower the state to enforce that law. It empowers private individuals who can sue people and claim a $10,000 bounty. And a lot of the arguments at issue in the last hour was the question of whether um, the 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 Supreme Court, whether the federal courts can enjoin uh, either state judges or state clerks from hearing those lawsuits. It turns on that question. And in fact, at one point, uh, the Chief Justice Roberts noted that when you talk about suing judges, you really get our attention. Um, and, and, and there was a, a variety of arguments both ways on that. But then um, the other major issue that this raises is the potential that this law holds to be replicated across the country. And there we heard an interesting question yeah. from Justice Brett Kavanaugh, who raised the question of another state yeah. banning assault weapons and imposing a million dollar fine. And would would that uh, would that allow the federal courts to step in and, and so-called pre-enforcement relief? And, and that was a little bit of a hint, because let's not forget that the Supreme Court has already allowed this law to stand with a five justice majority, including Kavanaugh. So what we were looking for here is any sign that any of these conservative justices were wavering. And I think we may have seen some of that, although it's always perilous to read into their questions. Yasmin. Yeah, it, it certainly is. Joyce, I, I want to pick up where Ken just left off, because that was a real moment um, for me as well. And I think a lot of folks um, that were watching when Justice Kavanaugh essentially challenged the Texas Solicitor General saying, can this be enforced, for instance, right to question Second Amendment rights, this type of vigilante uh, enforcement. What did you make of that particular exchange and also the response from the Texas Solicitor General um, saying, well, you got to refer it to Congress? And then uh, Justice Kagan saying, well, why do you need Congress when it's a right? Uh, talk me through that. So this is, I think, the most important exchange that we heard this morning, and it underlines the fact that this argument is not about substantive abortion rights. It's actually about the rule of law, and it goes to bedrock principles of our system, which give courts the right to review laws, and the argument is about whether this is a law that can be reviewed, and if so, by which court and how. Justice Kavanaugh is a pivotal vote, as Ken pointed out. From this morning's questioning, there seems to be good reason to speculate that both Justices Kavanaugh and Barrett, known opponents of abortion, nonetheless might take a, a very narrow view of the propriety of the Texas statute and find that because it, it is an intentional scheme designed to violate this principle of judicial review, uh, and of course, as you point out, this expansion that this same scheme could be used, for instance, uh, for religious rights or for gun rights, that they might join the folks on the court who would block the law from staying in effect while litigation was ongoing. Yasmin, it's important to point out that this is not about the substance of Texas's law. It's simply about whether it will yeah. be enjoined while litigation is ongoing. So, Kim, I, I think, understandably, much of our attention is focused on the Trump-appointed um, justices, right? You got Justice Kavanaugh, you got Justice Gorsuch, um, and Justice a Amy Coney Barrett. And I, and I thought it was fascinating, and in the last hour they pointed this out uh, as well, in that Justices Kavanaugh and Barrett seemed somewhat sympathetic to the attorney that was representing the Texas abortion clinics versus being, in, in a way, more aggressive towards uh, the Texas Solicitor General. What did you make of that? 
Yeah, we heard Justice Gorsuch, for example, more aggressive towards the abortion clinics. Uh, I mean, remember, Justice Kavanaugh taught constitutional law at Harvard and other places, and he made, I think, a really interesting point, particularly given we hear so much swirling around around originalism and, and how the law is static if you're a conservative justice. He said, listen, you know, it used to be that you couldn't sue states. And in this old case from 1908 called Ex Parte Young, the Supreme Court decided that if the states are acting in an unconstitutional way, you can't sue the state itself because of sovereign immunity, but you could sue a state actor. And he's saying, listen, why can't we move the bar a little bit here um, to adjust for what I think all the justices, or particularly the ones that are more critical of the law, are acknowledging is an attempt to manipulate and end run around, as Joy said, the rule of law, around the ability to challenge laws as unconstitutional. And we're going in to now the second part of the case involving the Department of Justice's uh, similar lawsuit to enjoin mm. this this law. And the argument is basically this is an attempt to violate federal law. It's about really an argument between the states and the federal government. That is, are the states going to comply with the Constitution itself? And I think that's where Justice Kavanaugh, I mean, knowing him for many years and having worked with him, I think that's something he is very concerned about in terms of the legitimacy of each branch of government. I can't speak for Amy Coney Barrett, except that I agree. It looks like she is not, as she said in her recent speech, going to make knee-jerk decisions based just on ideology and politics. Uh, just quickly, last question to you, Kim. Before um, b before we spoke, you actually spoke to one of my producers, and, and you talked about the fact that you think at this point, sadly, political ideology is what is driving uh, the conservative justices. Do you feel that still feel that way after uh, taking a listen for the last ninety minutes or so? You know, and the re I do in part because of the fact that this law was not enjoined already. I um, mean, you know, maybe given that the um, the, the approval ratings are dropping and, and the more justices on the court are being are feeling concerned, maybe that has shifted. But the, the thread throughout this entire argument is the fact that Roe versus Wade is bedrock black letter constitutional law. We're not talking about tweaking at the edges of the Second Amendment or tweaking at the edges of the First Amendment. We are talking about a clear violation of constitutional law. And the injunctive standard basically is pretty straightforward. It says, listen, if this is going to harm someone, women, um, uh, if you're probably going to win on the merits, Roe versus Wade, and if it's in the public interest to stop it, that is, look at this mess we're in in Texas and all of this debate and trauma really around uh, what's happened in the state of Texas to the rule of law, to people's perceptions of the court, et cetera, you stop it. Um, and Justice Chief Justice Roberts said that in his dissent in the original case where they refused to stop the law. He said, listen, let's just go to the status quo. Um, so that's where I think, and others have said, if this were a different constitutional right at stake and Texas or, say, California had done something cute like this and tried yeah. to outmaneuver judicial review, say, around gun rights, I have no doubt that this court would have enjoined it. It's the fact that it's abortion rights, I think, that 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 puts us in this weird posture as to whether the Constitution is the law of the land, according to this 6-3 conservative majority right now. And I I just want folks to understand what, what um, is happening right now. The Supreme Court justices hearing arguments, um, uh, Texas versus the U.S. And, and the U.S. Solicitor General just calling this an assault on the government, on court and on Congress. We're going to continue to take a listen um, to what is happening inside the Supreme Court as things develop and bring it to you.